Welcome to this new video. Blender just released version 2.92 with quite a few exciting new features. You can download the new version from blender.org slash download. In this video I'm going to show you a few cool tips and tricks with the new functions. Let's get started. In 2.92 we have a new attribute node. Now we can choose the type between geometry, object and instancer. When we leave this at geometry, we can use the same attributes as we did in previous Blender versions. But if I change this to object or instancer, we can use properties that are the same for the whole object. For example, I can type in color, plug this into the base color, and now go to the object data properties to viewport display and change the color of this attribute. Another property we can use is scale. As the name suggests, this outputs the scale value of this object. A cool thing we can do with this is add in a color ramp node, give it a gradient, so increase the saturation and value for both stops. Change this to HSV and the interpolation mode to far. And when I now scale the monkey, it changes its color. I think this is a really cool effect and it works with both EV and cycles. We can also use the rotation property for this. So go to the rotation values, right click on them and choose copy data path. Then go to the attribute node and use the shortcut Ctrl V to paste it. Now the monkey changes its color as I rotate it. In the next tip I'm going to show you how to change the color of this background after rendering. And we are going to do this with Eevee. The only thing we have to do before rendering is go to the view layer properties and on the cryptomat enable the object pass. Then we can press F12 and switch to the compositing workspace. Here we already have the finished render and as you might have noticed in the render layers we have those crypto outputs. To use those we need to add in a cryptomat node. Plug the image into the image and connect the crypto passes. We can use this crypto mat to mask out specific objects in the render. To do so, take a look at the pick output. As you can see, this gives each object a unique color. In the crypto mat node, we have this add and remove option. Let's click on add and select a few objects. When we now take a look at the image output, we can only see the objects we just selected. Let's go back to pick one more time and remove the objects we just selected. This time only add the background to the selection. We also have this matte output that now gives us a black and white image to mask out the background. We can use this in combination with a hue saturation value node. When we plug the mat into the factor, this node will only affect the white parts of the mask, which is the background. So now we can play around with those values and give the background any color we want. In previous Blender versions, Cryptomat only worked with cycles. Now in 2.92, it is finally implemented in Eevee. Another render pass that now works with Eevee is Shader AOV. To demonstrate this, let's go back to the 3D view, open the shader editor and take a look at the chair material. Under Add Output, we can choose this AOV output. This lets us create a custom render pass in the shader editor. To demonstrate this, I'm going to add in a new image texture. 
I create a new one and choose UV grid. This is what this texture looks like. Then I plug the color into the color of the AOV output and give it a name. I call it UV grid. Next I need to add this pass in this AOV panel. To do so click on this little plus. And now it is important that I give this the same name that I used in the node. So double click on it and I type in UV grid. That's all I have to do. Now I can press F12 again to render and go back to the compositing workspace. Now in the renders layer node we have this UV grid output. We can combine this with the render with an alpha over node. Use the factor to turn it on and off. You could use this technique to create a breakdown of your scene. In this example I have all those objects and one of them has a solidify modifier. I would like to copy this modifier to all the other objects. But I want to copy only the solidify modifier since they all already have a few modifiers. To do so I first select the object with the solidify modifier and then press A to select all the other objects. Then I go to the modifiers panel and open this little drop down menu. Here I click on copy to selected. Now the modifier is copied to all the selected objects. Primitive Add is a new modeling feature that you can find down here. This allows us to add basic shapes with only two clicks. This is extremely intuitive and very useful to block out basic shapes. We can use this to add cubes, cones, cylinders or spheres. Hold down Shift to fix the aspect ratio and ALT to center the pivot point. In the compositor there is now a new node to change the exposure within the node tree. Previously we had to do this with math nodes or by using the color management settings. The biggest change for 2.92 are the geometry nodes. To demonstrate this I'm gonna scatter those snowdrops on this plane. For this I need to open up a new window and switch to the geometry node editor. And here I create a new node tree. To scatter any objects with the geometry nodes we need a point distribute node. This creates those little points on the surface of the plane. We can control the amount of them with this density value. Those points are just empties that we can now replace with the snowdrops. To do so add in a point instance node. Here we can choose between object and collection. Since we have multiple objects to scatter we choose collection and select the snowdrops collection. In this example we want whole collection to be checked, otherwise it will instance each object individually. Now we just have the instance object but the original plane is missing. To bring it back we need a join geometry node and plug the original geometry into the second input. This is just a very basic example. If you want to learn more about the geometry nodes, I recommend you this introduction video by Chris Pren. He explains everything in much more detail. When we enable collision for an object, we now have this new option to turn it on or off. 
The cool thing about this is that we can animate it. So for example, I can turn it on for the first 40 frames, then right click on it, insert a keyframe, go to frame 41, disable it and insert another keyframe. I already did the same thing for the other three cubes below it. So let's press play and see what this looks like. This gives us a lot of new possibilities when working with physics simulation since it was previously not possible to animate the activity of a collider. In Blender it is possible to render with the GPU and the CPU at the same time. This is called hybrid rendering. Previously there was the problem that the CPU sometimes covered too many tiles while the GPU was already done, which made the render times quite a bit longer than they had to be. In the new version this is improved, which makes the hybrid rendering much more attractive. In this example I could speed up the rendering from almost 9 minutes in Blender 2.91 to 4 minutes and 24 seconds in 2.92. This is an exciting improvement. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for sticking around until the end. If you like the content I produce, please consider supporting Blender Daily on Patreon. This would help me a lot to keep improving the quality of my tutorials. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.